Hello, this is John Witherby from Witherby's Chairs doing another YouTube video. Doing some projects that uh, I thought was pretty interesting and part of it that I think would be interesting for you to do. A lot of uh, traditional woodworkers uh, would like to uh, see how to put a divided light or a sash together and we'll talk about that. I have a, a product here that I just started uh, bringing out. This is uh, maybe a curo cabinet, jelly cabinet. I've got it meant for uh, canning jars, a whole 12 uh, quart canning jars. A true divided light door. You can see on the back that you know, these, are, these aren't fakies. What I've always thought, if you're gonna go to the effort of making something, you know, let's make it right. And doing divided sashes, looks like it would be hard but really they're simple when you break it down i'll uh, take a few minutes point out some details about a sash and then i'll cut a couple joints so you'll see how they go together and get brave and try it yourself this one's pine this is going to be a an antiqued finish so pine is fine and it's strong enough it seems like it's too light but it's plenty strong the way the joints are. And when you put glass in them, it, it, it weights the door down and makes them feel a little more substantial. And this is one out of walnut. It'll be a walnut cabinet you know, with a clear finish. It's a little stiffer wood, heavier, but you can see that it it really machines nicely with a, with a lathe. It makes a nice smooth cut. Uh, walnut's wonder, wonderful stuff to work with. Pine is like uh, like air to work with. So it's a lot easier to uh, manipulate. Basically, these doors are a mortise and tenon frame. The tenons go right through the, the rail. And they're wedged. And surprisingly, you can do these without any glue whatsoever. I don't glue any of the mullions because they're all held. They can't go anywhere. These I do glue. But you can get away without doing it. You can just pin them and they will hold just fine. They're a lot more robust than they look. These are three quarters of an inch wide with a quarter inch tenon that goes all the way through. So you'll have a uh, fillet or fillet, if you want to call it that, here and here. And you're going to have a tenon that goes into this depth. This mullion is can't go this way, can't go that way, can't go that way, can't go that way. So there's no, no need to glue it and it holds them in. And it's just less stuff to clean up because the glue will squeeze out and it'll be something you'll have to clean up afterwards. So uh, no, no reason for doing that. The key to putting these together is having a mortise that goes straight through the rail. And what we'll do is I'll show you how I cut these. You can do this with a hollow chisel mortiser. They work very well. You can do them with a router. You clean up the corners, make them square. I cut them by hand. I don't have a hollow chisel mortiser. It would make it quicker. Some people cut by hand. They'll mark a couple lines and try to chop them, which is fine if you can do that, but you'll find that you know any error that's not square shows up in the door you have to shim them you know maybe shave the tenon it's easier just to have a nice straight cut i'll show you how i do a nice straight cut on them every single time and uh, it's nearly foolproof what i'll do is mark out this will be uh, a wider mortise be for a rail and then I'll do one for a mullion. I'll just do them on the same piece and I'll shape it. And then you'll see how they go together. This has to be transferred to the other side. So you just make a knife mark. And then you can just make a tick. Do the same thing here. Bush up that edge there, but don't worry about that. So then what we'll do is take a block, 
to the depth that you want the mortise. The mortise depth has to be the same as this area right here. So the mortise will go all the way through there and it'll leave this profile. So that, but you have to do these cuts first, trying to chop that mortise after you do this. It'd be very easy to, you know, booger up those corners. It's unstable. Cut them first. That's the, the secret to doing these. This is a quarter inch mortise chisel. It's going to depend on how big you make your sashes. If your sashes are going to be, have this area, three eighths of an inch, half an inch. These are tiny. This is for a three quarter inch door. So it leaves just, just enough room for glass. You, you can't even uh, put uh, pins in it. I just use a few dabs of silicone to hold the glass in. If you're doing a, a window sash, you know, those would be wider, one and three eighths. You would have a three eighths or half inch wide mortise. It leaves plenty of depth uh, to uh, put glass and glaze them. You can start right in the middle. What you're doing is you made a hole and these kind of just chop their way through it. Just pry out the, the pieces. Okay, then just chop a little closer to your line. Now you have a scribed line that will the chisel will fit right into. You look at it nice and square. Do the same thing on the other side, chop up close to it, put the chisel right in that groove, chop right into it. One thing I forgot to mention, you have a face side, mark that face side, always cut from the face side when you're molding or when you're, you're chopping. Very important because you can have a little variance in the thickness and it'll throw off. But if you always go from the same side, you won't have a problem with that. Especially if you're using hand surfaced material, it can have a little more dimensional differences. Then do the same thing. You feel it pop through. I just put a hole on on my bench and then chop my way back to that line and I just take a, a piece of wood like this and just, just knock everything through and then this guy would be for a mullion they only have to be about a quarter inch deep. Chop one direction and the other. Pop that right out of there. Right up into that notch, make it square, hit it. Plenty deep enough. So you can see you, you can go through a, a whole line of these Morrises pretty fast, especially in pine. So then you can mold it. The first thing you do before you lay these out, see which way the grain, you can see how the grain runs. Pine can sometimes fool you. It can be hard to see, especially this is oxidized on the outside. You want rising grain, so you're cutting. It's like a cat. It's only happy if you pet it one direction. So you get that marked. You have to do it all the way around your pieces that you're going to mold. So what we'll do is mold that guy real quick. This is a sash plane. This is a homemade one because it's hard to find them that are tiny like this. It's one I made. I just used O1 
uh, tool steel. It seems to cut pretty well. Oops. That, that fooled me. You can see how the it's tearing. You can see the profile, but yeah, that, that grain really was not fantastic there. We can take just a thin shaving off. Obviously, I couldn't use this on a, on a door. It'd be too torn up, but you can see the profile. See, right in here, the grain was good, it's, and it's rising both directions. So that, that is uh, a real headache with, with this. It has to be you know good grain. I noticed what, like doing uh, cherry or wall and stuff, the, the grain is very pronounced. You can see it, you can, and it's easier to figure out which way to go. Now what we need to do is get the other side of that. This will be the tenon that goes in. It has to be profiled to match that. I'm going to go an inch and a quarter deep on this particular profile. It's going to vary according to you know, whatever cutter you have. And what we'll do is just... And you're asking, why am I doing that? We'll see in just a minute. Now we'll cut the tenon. Now, you, of course, you can do this with a table saw if, if you want to, a router table. Now on the one side, you can run your blade just a little bit more. Bench dog seems to going away. That makes a nice little groove for that saw to ride in. Makes a nice clean cut. Ta-da! Now, we'll plane this side. Hopefully this grain will be a little more agreeable. Yeah, that's a lot nicer. See how clean that cut is? When the grain's going the right way, nothing will match a, a molding plane for a nice clean cut. Because you can have a rotary cutter, like a router or shaper, there will be some ripple to it, even though it's faint. These are incredibly smooth cutting. Now here's the problem if this is a, oh, a T coming in, say you have a big divided light. I have to flip this over. See, now the grain's going to go the other direction. Now that fillet right there actually forms part of the tenon. That's why you make your mortise the same width. See how those joints? It looks like it's mortised. But now what we're going to do is make what would be a mullion piece. These are real fun. There's no mortises to cut. There's no tenon to cut because they do it themselves as you cut the joint. And what we'll do is grab a scrap of something. key to making that joint is right side up. Hopefully this green will be okay. It looks like it's rising this way, so we want to play in this way. On this guy, 
We want to do the bottom first. It sets in this groove. And we'll use a tongue cutter. You don't have to do it this way. You could do it with just a sash plane, lay it on one side, cut it, flip it over, and you'd have to have a shape cut out and do the other side. That'll hold the glass. Then we'll flip it over. It should be able to go. Now you're gonna plane from the other direction. Hopefully the the wood will be agreeable. Then we'll use this guy cuts both ends of the mullion. You can see it's both halves. See the sash plane cuts one side and a rebate for your glass. And you could do it like that. Flip it over like that. See how the mullion just pops right in. And so it can't go any direction. The only direction goes out. So if it's captured inside a frame, you don't need to have any glue or anything. So what you can do, if you want to do this at home, in your shop, and you've been, oh, you know, they look a little scary, make a mortise and tenon frame. Before you make the mortise and tenon frame, you have to have a profile. Do it with a router, right? a router table. You don't have to have a, a sash plane. You can do it with just a a molding plane with a profile you, you like, you can find them all over. If you want to do them all with hand tools, then you can use a, a philister and cut this on the other side, or you can put it on a table saw, a router table, make that shape. The only thing that you're going to have to improvise is doing this coped joint right here. These planes are really simple to make. See, they're not cutting very much, just a little bit. So what you can do is make the profile and then 45 one end. And that will allow you to see what the shape should be. You can use a, a coping saw or chisels and cut that shape. And then what you do is make this as a one-sided, like a robot style plane. You just need to make this edge and then this line right here will stop it right from it'll be your depth stop and they're only quarter inch thick generally i mean five sixteenths three eighths would be uh, you know on the outside make the shape to cut that and you can sit on the tenon and cut them with these I, you have to have something for it to sit on because you don't have a tenon you know these heights are all going to be different you know it depends on uh, what profiles you have that allows you to cut them and just make this guy a little bit on the big side to start. Cut a few, see how, if you put it in and it's too sloppy, these are easy to trim down a little bit and you can regrind the, the blade until you can either be spot on if you're using a, a hard type of wood or if you're using pine or mahogany or walnut, they have a little bit of gift to them, a little on the tight side when you push it together, it'll make a nice tight. I mean, you can have too much of a good thing, but it makes a nice looking joint. And they're incredibly durable. They, they look, you know, very delicate, but they're very stiff. You know, they're very strong uh, units. And it just, you won't step up your work to have a, a nice divided light sash or frame. And it's a... You know, and that's something coming out of Kmart or Walmart. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. And uh, give it a shot and see what you think. Leave me some comments.